Hello and welcome to Football Daily, where today we're looking at 10 myths during the rounds this season which are totally disproved by the stats. 10. Kevin De Bruyne has tailed off With City winning just four of their opening nine games to tumble into mid-table, it's tempting to see the whole squad as underperforming this season. And with the departure of David Silva and absence of Aguero, it's easy to explain why Kevin De Bruyne is not producing at the level of last year, when he delivered 33 league goals and assists. But there's one hitch. It isn't true. Though before the 5-0 win over Burnley, KDB was scoring or assisting every 140 minutes, poor by his standards, his middling output is more down to bad luck than bad performances. The Belgian is putting up the best shot numbers of his career at 4 a game, and the second best key pass numbers at 3.7. While his expected goal stands at 0.87 per 90, barely below last term's 0.92, and again his second best ever. If he had finished at that predicted rate, he'd have an extra two goal involvements. But the midfielder is still second in the Premier League for assists, despite playing only 69% of available minutes to date. In fact, De Bruyne's creative stats are exactly the same as those of Jack Grealish. But somehow the 29-year-old is criticised while the Englishman is praised, expecting back on top of the assist charts before long. 9. Giroud should be playing more here at FD, we've always tried to champion underrated players, but even were baffled by the discourse around Chelsea's Olivier Giroud. The Frenchman has played just 189 minutes this season at the time of writing, but has still delivered two goals, and in his ninth campaign in England, is suddenly being reappraised as one of the great undervalued strikers of the last decade, especially in light of his continued excellence for the national team. Of course, Giroud has always been useful, but his increased effectiveness is more down to a change of role than long ignored brilliance. Technically and physically strong, the 34-year-old has benefited from a late career as a super sub, with 71 of his 104 Premier League appearances since 2016 coming from the bench. In that time, he's averaged a goal or an assist every 110 minutes, whereas during the preceding years as a starter, he was only involved in a goal every 126 minutes despite playing alongside chance creation machines like Alexis Sanchez, Meza Ozil and Santi Cazorla. Frankly, football loves nostalgia, and it's easier to look past a player's deficiencies when they rarely start. Giroud may be better than he was once considered, but with Werner at Chelsea and Aubameyang at Arsenal, he can hardly complain about his spot on the sideline. Before we go any further, just a quick reminder to subscribe to Football Daily and hit that notification bell to never miss one of our fantastic top 10s. 8. Arsenal could do better than Henrik Mkhitaryan for years, Arsenal could attack but couldn't defend. Now they can barely do that. After 10 games, the Gunners have managed 95 shots, 14th in the Prem, and netted just 10 times for their worst goal total at this stage of the season since 1986, going 8 hours without an open play strike. The lack of threat from wide has been a huge part of that, with Willian and Pepe producing just 4 goal contributions in 17 appearances, and already the club is looking at January targets in a bid to rescue their campaign. But perhaps they could have kept hold of a former star instead. Henrik Mkhitaryan was universally hated at the Emirates, but contributed to a goal every 160 minutes, compared to one every 208 minutes for Pepe. And this year he seems to have rediscovered his Dortmund form at Roma, with 9 goals and assists after 9 matches, just one fewer than Arsenal in the Prem. Only Ibrahimovic has contributed more in Serie A, and the Armenian also brings the creativity and intensity Arteta craves with more passes into the box and more pressures than any wide player at the Emirates. Two years younger than Willian and paid less, Mkhitaryan might have been unpopular, but Arsenal were better with him than they are now. 7. Liverpool would be screwed without Van Dijk Virgil van Dijk is the best centre-back in the world. Liverpool's defence has been better without him. On the face of it, these statements shouldn't both be true. But whilst we've often worried about what would happen if VVD picked up a long-term injury, the Reds haven't missed a beat since the Dutch defender was ruled out for the season after an ACL injury suffered against Everton in October. In the seven games the 29-year-old played before his injury, Liverpool let in 15 goals, though they only allowed nine shots a game in that period. But in the nine games since, they've allowed just six goals and are conceding even fewer shots, 8.6 a game. Fabinho has been a big part of that, dropping into the back line but retaining big ball-winning numbers, but the front line is also breaking up play early, with 10.1 fouls committed per game to the 8.7 they averaged last season despite mostly playing with four forwards and two midfielders instead of 4-3-3. That stopped youngsters like Nathaniel Phillips, Reese Williams and Nico Williams from facing much traffic, with the Reds ranking second bottom in the league for tackles and interceptions and bottom for aerial duels. That Klopp is still excelling with a depleted squad should make every other club in England very afraid. 6. Bruno Fernandes gives the ball away too much Despite a stellar start to the season which has seen Bruno Fernandes reach 20 goals in just 35 games for Man United, 
Faster than any midfielder in the club's history, there are still critics of the Portuguese. Of course, more than half of his goals have come from penalties, but there are also some who feel the former sporting man gives away possession too cheaply, and greater discipline would improve his output further. Kevin De Bruyne and Ross Barkley are the only Premier League midfielders taking more shots than Bruno's 3.3 a game this year, but just a third of Fernandez's shots come from inside the box with too many speculative efforts from range. That can be coached out of him, but he's also being targeted for his pass accuracy of just 77%, a complaint which ignores his role. Fernandez doesn't just create chances, currently leading the league with 26, but also does all of United's ball progression, ranking first in the Prem for passes into the box, first for progressive passes, and fifth for passes into the final third per 90, a huge burden which he somehow couples with outstanding defensive intensity. Despite all this, Bruno's pass accuracy is only 1% below De Bruyne's, and his goal output can match any strikers. If you don't like the way he achieves that, perhaps your issue should be with Solskjaer. 5. Bayern will run away with the Bundesliga After a European treble last campaign and with Jadon Sancho linked away from Dortmund, it was widely expected that Bayern would rump to a ninth successive title this year. And a glance at the table might confirm that view, with the Munich side top after nine fixtures with the best goal difference in the league. But the stats tell a different story. By expected points, Hansi Flick's team have actually only been the fourth best team in the Bundesliga so far, with Dortmund, Leipzig and even Union Berlin more consistent early doors. That overperformance is largely down to the attack, which while still the best in the country has seen the club score 31 from 22 XG, unsustainable even for a team with elite finishes. The defence is also a work in progress, rating sixth best in the division and it's only Manuel Noir keeping it tight, with the stopper already saving his team an estimated three goals more than expected, a bigger difference than he managed over the whole of last season. With Lewandowski facing golden boot competition from Holland, more of him later, Thiago gone and Kimmich ruled out until the new year, the Bavarians have a tougher title race than they might have hoped. Let's hope it lasts past March this time. 4. Serie A is a farmer's league This is a myth which has busted itself over the last few seasons, but in 2020, we can't quite believe that people are still writing off Serie A. The division has become a hotbed of intriguing talent and innovative coaching, and the increased competition has made the title race more unpredictable than ever this year, with only one of the league's top four sides from last campaign among the UCL places at the time of writing. Once seen as a defensive division, Serie A was the second highest scoring in Europe last season with three goals a game to the Premier League's 2.7 and this year no top league has seen more goals than Italy's huge 3.3 per match. And the big sides are getting better. Eight teams currently take more than 14 shots a game compared to just four in England, and five sides average over four attempts more than their opponents per 90, a claim just three Premier League clubs can make. Critics will use the continued success of veteran players in Italy as a sign of low quality, but no one calls the Prema retirement home despite Cavani, Thiago Silva, Vardy and Fernandinho all playing key roles in ambitious sides. It's time to acknowledge that Italy doesn't just have a proud footballing history, it has an exciting future too. 3. Jota is a new player at Liverpool When Diogo Jota signed for Liverpool in September, many doubted whether he'd be able to break into one of the most formidable front lines in world football. After all, he'd scored just seven league goals in 2019-20, even fewer than Firmino's nine, and it remained to be seen whether he could match the Brazilians' physical, creative and defensive presence as the Reds chased a second successive Premier League crown. But after a quarter of the season, all such doubts are gone, with Jota already over halfway to last year's tally and hailed as a brand new player at Anfield. Last term, Jota actually underperformed his expected goals, hitting 7 from 12 XG, but he's doing the opposite this year, scoring at almost double expectation. That means that while his XG per 90 has only improved from 0.4 to 0.5, his actual goals have gone from 0.3 a game to 0.9, while his shots, despite rocketing from 2.7 to 4, have actually slightly decreased in quality overall. This isn't to say he's not better, but Jota's leap forward is largely down to better teammates and reaching 24 years old, when attackers often go up a gear. Perhaps it's Liverpool's recruitment team, not Klopp, who get the credit for this one. 2. Haaland has surpassed Mbappe After 16 goals in 11 league and Champions League appearances, it's inevitable that Erling Haaland is sparking comparisons with the best young player in the world, Kylian Mbappe. Even we at FD have asked how the two compare, but while he's clearly a superstar, can Haaland really claim to be better than the World Cup winner? The stats suggest it's close. To date, Haaland has 18 goal involvements this season and an average of one every 50 minutes, while Mbappe has scored or assisted every 51 minutes. However, the underlying numbers give the edge to the Frenchman, with five shots, two chances created, and 1.3 XG a game, outstripping even Haaland's excellent 4.3 shots, 1.3 chances created, and 1.1 XG. Though a great finisher, the Dortmund man is running hot, 
scoring 10 Bundesliga goals from 7xG, and he's had easier competition than Mbappe, with the Champions League group of Lazio, Zenit and Bruges, and just two of Dortmund's nine league opponents so far in the top half of the table. By comparison, six of PSG's domestic games have been up against top half opposition, while their European group features RB Leipzig and Man United. Both are spectacular players and likely to dominate world football for years to come. But for our money, Mbappe remains the best youngster we've ever seen. 1. Mourinho has changed Chasing the title with one of the best attacks in the league, Tottenham Hotspur are flying in 2021, and their free-scoring exploits have led many to praise Jose Mourinho for reinventing himself. After all, Harry Kane is contributing to a goal every 50 minutes at the time of writing, while Hyung min Son put himself in line for a huge contract with 9 goals in 10 games. So, has Mourinho's bus finally got into gear? Well, under the hood, this Spurs side is much like other good Mourinho outfits. They only take around 13 shots a game, 8th most in the Prem, and while those are good quality amounting to the second most expected goals, they've got lucky on both ends, scoring four more than expectation and conceding two fewer to double their predicted goal difference. And though they began the season pressing high, they're now a conventional deep block defence, with just three teams catching opponents offside less often, and in classic Jose fashion they lead the league in pressures in their own defensive third and commit the most fouls in the division. This is all typical Mourinho, but so is winning a trophy in his second season. And with the table in disarray, sneaking a title would rank among the special one's most special achievements. So guys, that was our rundown of 10 football missed the stats proved wrong this season. What did you guys think of the list and did we miss any out? Let me know in the comments down below. As I said earlier, don't forget to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.